people and wait for the live to come on. And here we are. Hi, it's Margaret Hirsch, you're at home with Hirsch's. Thank you for joining us for our property club today. And we are so excited to have Yael Geffen with us. Um, she, as you know, she has one of the biggest property companies in the whole country, sells globally as well. And we've got such exciting stuff for you today. So come on, Glenda, do you want to introduce Yael for us? Unmute yourself, Glenda. There you go. Okay, here we go. Um, so yes, welcome, Yale. It's so good to have you. And Yale has also just recovered from COVID. So well done for having the strength to come on board. Um, Yale is the CEO and a shareholder of Sotheby's International Realty, South Africa. She grew up in the real estate dynasty established by her grandmother, Ida. And prior to joining the family business in 2009, she acquired extensive real estate marketing, brand building and business development experience in the States. She's a sought after life and business strategy advisor. And in 2020, she won the Standard Bank prestigious Top Women in Property Award. So we really are amazingly honored to have you on board, Yale, and welcome. Thank you so much. I have to say, after recovering from uh, COVID, that introduction has really made me feel very good. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'll go for it. The floor is yours. Um, yeah, so I just, I'm here to talk all things property really with you. Um, Margaret, do you want me to go over the Gauteng property market or? Yeah, let's talk about Gauteng property first and then KZN and, and Cape, which usually follow that. Why it's the best time to buy because the interest rates are the lowest they've been in donkey's years. And yes, and then we'll go into how to sell your home, home stage, what to look for in a home, all that type of thing. You tell us. Okay, so what we're seeing in Gauteng um, is very interesting because we predict it's going to change. Right now, it's definitely still a buyer's market, but buyers are very savvy. And they're not necessarily looking for bargains, but they're looking for value. Value, 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 value is the word. So whatever price bracket in Gauteng we're looking at, they're looking for value. Um, they're savvy. They know what prices are worth. So if you as a seller are putting your property on the market and it is overpriced, it's not going to move because the buyers are informed. They're partnering up with the right uh, estate agents. They're very selective in choosing that we see these days. The lower to middle end properties are, are moving and they're buzzing and those are obviously moving very quickly. They, we do get some nice high price, high price properties here and there, but uh, not it's, it's not in overdrive, so to speak. It's still the lower to mid is the, the bread and butter of the market. But I have some stats from you, you know, if I look at our, our Gauteng region from last year, this time to now, we've actually seen 144% growth for the whole region, which is fantastic. But also, you know, you have to take into account those two months that real estate was closed um, last year during that lockdown stage five. And in terms of uh, a quarter growth from February, we're up 44%. So the property market is great in Gauteng. It's a great time to buy. And there's, um, yeah, there's very savvy, savvy, savvy buyers. It's amazing. Now, for, uh, what I found is people who had big houses are moving to smaller houses. <laughs> Sorry, and those who had smaller houses are moving to big houses. So you had a couple who had this massive five bedroom house. Their kids have moved away nobody to fill it up then you had others who were in the three bedroom flat which was fine when they were all out all day now they're all homeschooling and that they've got moved into bigger houses what do you see as the trend as being so it's interesting i remember when i was interviewed by private property and i said i said this little um jar uh, this little this little like slang term and i'm going to use it now because it stayed with me so you are spot on what used to be lock up and go has now turned to staycation. So people are buying to stay <laughs> because there's no vacation. So they're wanting gardens. They're wanting for everything that they've ever not wanted to maintain. They're now wanting it. And, you know, those highly sought after uh, urban densified buildings and complexes uh, are now going more remote. People are wanting more space. And 
because you can work remote. I mean, look at what we're doing right now. Um, you have the privilege of doing this. So that's why there's immigration happening as well. People are moving to their dream coastal areas because they're able, thankfully to COVID and the way in which work life has changed, they're able to do this. And we find that uh, people who were in, staying in Joburg because that's where the money was are now thinking, well, I'm, I'm sitting at home in my house in Joburg. Why don't I move to Belita or to Cape Town or wherever? And I see people are doing that. But also I see that they're advertising overseas for people who are living in Sweden and Norway and London to come back to South Africa because you can work over, your, over the internet anyway. So why would you stay in a horrible cold place when you can come here to our magnificent weather? How do you see that trend going forward? Yeah, so it's interesting because even, you know, we do see foreign investors and we have the normal swallows that come from Europe as well, not right now, but over the summer. So that that hasn't tapered off too much, which is which is great. But yes, because of the ability to work anywhere. Um, you can certainly do it. In terms of immigration, um, we're looking at South Africans, a lot of the young kind of mobile, trendy, um, economically and financially stable, and they have kind of a high appetite for um, IT and entrepreneurship. A lot of them are actually going to Holland. Uh, we're seeing that Holland now is like the new destination or the Netherlands um, in terms of a, a younger market moving across. But yeah, there is activity. Um, but I think South Africans are also realizing what a beautiful country we have with such great big places to live in. You know, if you're in London or in Italy and you're trapped in a little flat uh, during COVID, you know, we realize we've got sprawling gardens, if we're lucky, or pools. Some people even have like jacuzzis or workout rooms. So we are very privileged. Now, tell us about when we want to sell our house, you know, there's home staging. Now, a lot of people just sell. I know that I was looking to buy a house and they sent me a picture. I said, show me a picture of the kitchen. And they'd obviously just walked in with their, their bags of shopping and there were these spa bags all over the floor. And that's how they took the picture. And it just put me so off. I was willing to go and look at that house. Tell me about home staging and what, if we want to sell our house, what can we do to make it look really good? And of course, I'm a great one for smelling. You must put the coffee on, have some, you know, cinnamon buns in the oven. Um, that type of thing what do you do and what do you not do okay so i've actually got a presentation that i'd love to share with you it's it's not a long one um and i just made a few points of this can you see it perfect and i'm also i'm seeing that my battery is going flat which is very um unprofessional of me so just give me one quick second that i, I plug this in and we can do that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I mean, home staging, I, how I like to think about it, Margaret, is it's, it's theater. So it's essentially theater, it engages all your senses to entice your buyer. It's yearning for your property into ultimately buying your property. So um, I want to show you, you know, you spoke about the spa packets and often we take for granted what's in our home and what isn't in our home. Um, and I, I, I hope you can't hear the noise that's in the background. If you can, I can tell my child who's homeschooling to calm down a bit. Can you hear the noise? We can't hear it. We absolutely love children anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, it's all full on. The dog, the child, it's everything. <laughs> so this is a, a very important statistic. I love data because data is really what moves me when we make conclusions or deductions. So homes with high quality photography sell 32 times faster. So it's not just um, me as the head of an estate agency in South Africa saying, oh, home staging is so important. There's the stats right there. Okay, so I've got examples for you because like you say, it's, it's such a visual element, home staging. So this property or this room is the same room. Okay, so if we look at the difference in the photographs, right? So you've got the, the one on the left, it's dark, the, the windows and the blinds are down, the lights are off. And just by shifting the angle, changing the artwork, opening the blinds and the curtains and, and, and decorating the table, it looks like another universe, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not hard to do. And um, property photography is what gets your property noticed on the portals and on your agent of choices uh, website. So if you don't have a professional pro uh, photographer, which a lot of the branded reputational agencies have, you will get lost in, in the sea of a marketplace. The buyers will not be enticed to even make the appointment to view your property if your photographs are awful. Here's another example of a photograph. The left, look at that. The right, it just opens up the space. It looks like a different room. It does. It really does. Yeah, it looks so much more spacious. I know. And now we've got a kitchen, same kitchen, just a different angle and lighting. Um, and, and that's what we're looking at. So, so what happens is now you go from the photography on the websites or the portals and you come into viewing the home. You, they set up the appointment and now you've got the walkthrough happening. And what is the buyer thinking? The buyer's thinking, could I live here? That's, that's what they're thinking, right? So Margaret, you mentioned the spa packets. Look at this. If you've got a cluttered kitchen like this with pots and pans and Tupperwares and that, I'm not going to want to live there. I know what my own kitchen looks like, and it looks very similar to this right now. <laughs> but, but, but this isn't selling the, my future kitchen, right? And look at this. I'm just showing you the kind of worst of the worst examples. No one's going to want to live here. Rather have an empty room. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now you see this, I mean, is a quite a simple room and mm. it's clean, uh, the lighting's on. So I've got a few tips and tools to share for our, our savvy listeners today um, in terms of what they need to do to their homes. The rule of thumb is declutter. All those family pictures, fridge magnets, magazines, remotes, extensions, cables, keys, papers, towels, bath mats. Make your bathrooms and your kitchen areas supremely neat and clean. These are the areas that are most noticed by your future buyers. And, and I like to say, if you, if you don't see it in a hotel room, it shouldn't be in your staged home, you know? So if you, if you don't see clutter in a hotel room when you walk in, shouldn't be there and then before you you sell your home or you put it on the market there are so many easy upgrades to do I did this with an investment property of mine and it's unbelievable for such little capital for such little money what you can achieve by simply painting touching up paint jobs cleaning um, I replaced light switches. I replaced door handles and doorknobs. You replace old dirty carpets with tiles. You do some pressure wash paving, you know, with a, a pressure, pressure washer. Um, it completely brings the tiles back to life and, and looks more polished. You plant flowers, you spruce up the garden. If you've got a pool, for God's sakes, clean the pool, service the pool. <laughs> Because right now the pool is a luxury feature. The garden's a luxury feature. Don't show them dirty, um, dark brown, burnt grass. Make, make an effort. Clean and polish. And, and this is a trick. I don't know if anyone shared this in the property club before, but if you're a buyer, you want to make sure that your water pressure throughout the house is good because the savvy... Um, uh, sorry, if you're a seller, you want to make sure that the water pressure is good because the savvy buyer will put on every tap in that house to see if that's good water pressure. So you might need a plumber in before. And the garage is an area which is completely overlooked. So you really, really want to make sure that that's clean. And now you talk about the beautiful smell, Margaret. This is such an important feature of home staging. You want the smell to be inviting and warm. When I lived in LA and I was trying to rent out a property, I actually went and baked some homemade chocolate chip cookies just before they arrived. So when they arrived, not only did I have the cookies out for them, but they felt like they were part of this home warm environment that they could live here with their family. And whether or not it's a beautiful linen spray or the windows are beautifully open and the doors are open and it's fresh, Make sure just before they come, you, you give the nice the place a lovely spritz. All the lights must be on before the appointment to view. 
um, sh shutters open, windows open, blinds open, not if it's freezing in Joburg right now, you don't want it too cold because then they think they'll, they'll freeze in winter. Crisp and clean linen on the beds, nice full toilet rolls, not little straggles with like one little sheet left. Um, kitchen and bathroom spotless. And those are the tips. And yeah, now we go back to this awful picture of this cluttered, this cluttered room where you could just put everything away. And then that beautiful open room. And um, just last data that I, I need to share with you to really hone in what I'm saying, you know, staging helped increase offer amounts anywhere from 1% to 5%. And that's the National Association of Realtors. And that's a lot. And if you think about the time that properties stay on the market, stage homes spend between 33% and 50% less time on the market. So it's not just lip service, that's the data. So that's, that's, that's what I have to say about happy home staging. Yes, and, and I do know that um, one of my friends had a house for sale actually in Hillcrest and she, it was on the market for six months, they never sold it. And then she got a Ferrari and put it in the garage and she took a video of it just with her iPhone, just videoed the whole house from one side to the finish. And you know, you know your old, own house better than anywhere else. So you can say, this is a nice feature here. I really like this here. This, I always sit here. And she did this video and she gave it to the agent and they sold it literally that same weekend because the, the agent sent the video out to people. So how do you see taking a video of your home do you do it as an agency or do you tell the customer to do it themselves to get that that whole you know you can show pictures but if you show a video and she, it really looked elongated and it looked amazing and the people bought it without even seeing it and they, they're in there now they're very happy with it but and um, what do you think about doing a video about your home and just you know she narrated it all the way through it was really good yeah. It's so important. It's such a wonderful tool. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because it's not just about photographs. The videos get, give you a real sense of the place. So when you engage with us, we do, as an agency, um, have professionals that shoot videos. There's even the uh, 3D videos, they call Matterport, where it's those fancy cameras that yes. just go in and do the work themselves. In, yeah. in very high priced properties, we have drone footage um, uh, that, you know, uh, bird's eye view photo, uh, oh. yeah, got beautiful wine farms and all that. It goes such a long way. And, and I don't think you can get away with even, you know, an investment property that I had that, that I put um, for up for rent. It was a very uh, minimal property, small property, um, nothing fabulous. And I, I got it videoed and it got people in. Uh, very quickly, video is an essential tool for you as a seller to use in getting that buyer in. Now, you know, there's so many office blocks that are empty. I mean, everybody in offices are working from home. I know Nedbank have said they're definitely not even coming back this year. Um, so uh, when you think of, I, I just think of our, our bank was Standard Bank and that big Standard Bank building in Rosebank. Do you think that we're going to start turning those into um, residential houses? Because I don't see them ever going back to being full of people in offices again. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that the other day because you have all these, you know, and it's not a new concept, but it's it's kind of um, it's it's taken the market by storm. Those co-shared working spaces, so you've got the WeWorks and um, workspace, and and almost like those Regis spaces as well. Yeah. I, I think that the whole nature of our working world has changed. Um, I know a lot of Discovery are working from home. Um, I, I also bank with Standard Bank. I know my, my Standard Bank broker is working from home. Um, yeah. And I think it would be wiser then to actually do a mixed use building to, yeah. because they've spent the money and, yeah. and they've got these massive, beautiful locations. It would be wiser then to maybe add some uh, penthouses or complexes um, in there. And perhaps, you know, even some of the bankers could could live there you know yeah. I, that just came to me now um <laughs> <laughs> that for me <laughs> but, but, that, but that could be quite nice for the staff to also perhaps live there you know 
Yes, because a lot of those um, old fashioned buildings that are getting quite degenerated in the middle of Joburg have been turned into very fancy little flats for the yuppies and they're working incredibly well. So that's a good idea. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is overseas properties. I know Sotheby's is not only in South Africa. You can buy and sell overseas as well. If you're a South African and you you paid for your house and you've got a little bit of capital at the moment and you want to invest overseas, I know that I've had people marketing to me from Portugal and from all over the show. What is your thought on investing in property overseas? Well, you know, it, it also depends on most of most of the appetite we get for overseas properties is South Africans looking for a dual residence or some kind of backup plan or second home for the future for their children for them some uh, alternate residency so we i mean we're very privileged to to be with our brand sotheby's international realty we're in 72 countries and we have over a thousand offices in the world and um, all, all the territories that you can think of so we have operators and affiliates in Portugal, in Cyprus, um, all over the world, in America, um, you, in you name it. Yeah, London, Asia. I mean, London is where Sotheby's began. So that was probably one of the first, you know, Sotheby's auction house and then became Sotheby's International Realty. So yes, there, there certainly is appetite um, to have that secondary home if you can afford it and also that dual residence. Um, you know, so if you think about it, children these days, well, it depends. If you, if you are privileged and you're able to send your kids to university overseas, it does make sense to, to look at that and to look at that as, as a way of them having perhaps a future in another country as well. But there's certainly appetite. We actually have an international desk for that. Um, Graham Deirdrex is our broker, our international desk broker, who deals with all these requests. And, and it's quite hot. Every time we get a seller selling, uh, we ask, are you looking at anywhere international? And, and, and a lot of the time they are. So he will go between our international affiliates and, and service them and make sure that they're well placed at their dream location. Yeah. Now, with so many people working from home, are they looking for houses with studies and are they looking for extra bedrooms that they can turn into a study? What do you find people are looking for when they ask you for a house today? What do they actually say? This is what I need a, a work from home. I need somewhere to homeschool my kids. I need an office for myself and my wife. Um, what sort of things are they asking for? Are these bigger houses becoming more popular? Because you know, in the old days, nobody wanted a big house. I don't need a house. We're out every weekend. We at work all day. For goodness sake, all I need is a bed. And then suddenly they say, oh my gosh, I need some space. I'm, I'm homeschooling. My wife's talking to her webinar. I've got to talk on mine. What do they ask for now? Yeah, well, I mean, just to share with you, you know, when COVID started, I was living in a complex with my child and it, it felt so claustrophobic. You know, at that time, we weren't allowed to walk in the parking lot and the rules were so strict. And now I have moved as a result. And you, they are looking for, like I said, gardens, uh, greenery, because <laughs> when you don't have that and you're trapped at home, it's, it's not yeah. nice. But home offices or cottages um, that they turn into home offices definitely in demand. And um, I, I think soundproofing will probably become more popular for, for kids' playrooms <laughs> and, uh -huh. and kids' work areas, but definitely more space as more, more space for mom, like a home office, or, some, or space for dad, a home office, or and, and a section where you can put your child in homeschool. I mean, my child's next door right now busy homeschooling um, so it is it's a it's a reality I, I like the idea of um, going off the grid and um, and 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 I would love to start this concept for our brand for our customers called work pods where you've got a section in the garden and you could erect a self-supporting self-sustaining structure that's perhaps off grid um, because not only do we have homeschooling now in COVID we've got ESCOM load shedding so off-grid, sustainable living is very popular where you don't have to rely on ESCOM um, for your electricity and your power and, and solar. Uh, solar is very popular because again, with water. And so the, the savvy buyers out there are looking for bigger properties, definitely with office spaces, home office spaces, 
um, perhaps even cottages on the property and, and big gardens. Now, it's all about location, location, location. If you are buying to live, not as an investment property, somewhere to live at the moment in Gauteng, it's in the greater Joburg area. What are the trending um, areas at the moment? Sure. It's, it's, so, it's so interesting. So Midrand is definitely developing um, in a big way. Yeah, for the fourth area, that seems to yeah, be that, trending. That whole area, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, I, Pretoria in, in, in Joburg specifically or in Gauteng? No, in Gauteng, yeah, in the whole Gauteng. Pretoria also buzzing at the moment and, and a lot of, funny enough, office locations for um, head offices are moving to Pretoria. You know, they always used to be further down in the northern suburbs, then they moved to Midrand and now they're moving to Pretoria because there's a lot of value out there. Um, so definitely Pretoria, uh, Midrand, I know that uh, Rudaport and Randburg, there's a lot of activity there as well. And yeah, you get your nice high-end areas like your Bryanstons and your Hyde Parks and that. But a lot of movement, I would say, in the Pretoria areas, Pretoria East, Centurion, Midrand, um, Rudaport and, and Randburg. Those areas are kind of bustling at the moment. Now, tell me for the first time home buyer, I've been renting, my, my wife, my kids, myself, we've been renting our flat for so long, I suddenly realized that I could buy it and pay the same amount of rental, even my rental and my levy will come out to what I'm paying for, for rental now. So, I mean, my bond and my levy will equal my rental. So, when should I decide that this is the time to buy, or should I continue renting? Because it's, you know, the, we've always said the country's a bit volatile and that, but now it's, it seems to have stabilized, we're going to be here anyway. I, I say to people, there's never been a better time to buy than now. If, if you, you're renting, you shouldn't be renting as a South African, you get a 110% bond and just go out and buy that property because you'll get the capital appreciation. What is your advice to first-time homeowners? You asked me when the right time to buy was, I would say last year or you yeah. know yesterday, because yeah. we uh, this is a record low interest rate. We haven't seen it in 80 years. So it is, it's more affordable to buy as a first-time home buyer, we see so many more first-time home buyers across Kauteng, across the country because of this. Uh, they're able to finally afford buying that first home. If I think back in the day of my parents, what, what you know, it was, it was the norm um, yeah. to have a home uh, in your 20s, you could afford it. Now you can't. It's, yeah. it's a different world. So with that interest rate definitely going down, the absolutely best time to buy is now while it's while it's still hot and while it's a buyer's market for sure we've got a question Mom, coming yeah. this question. facebook i just want to just do this question on facebook quickly how does one decide on the offering price especially if you really want that particular property do you go in a little bit i know one of my friends put her, her house on the market and one of our other mutual friends put an offer in and she was so insulted that he dropped her price does he think my house is worth this? I said, well, that's what people normally do. Whatever price you put on as an asking price, they do drop the price when they make an offer. That's why they make an offer. What's your take on that one? Now, this is where, you know, when we started the conversation, I was talking about the, the properties that are moving are realistically priced because buyers are so savvy. So we, we use a concept of the auction principle in our brand. And this is why, and, and I'm not just doing a sales pitch now on, on teaming up with a real estate agent, but they are the professional that will help you price property realistically. I know that it's very hard, so, and I've been there as well as, as the seller, where it depends what market you're in. But if you're in a market where your price has to come down, your property isn't going to move unless that happens. But what we like to do is we like to cushion it, we use parameter advertising and the auction principles. So we, what we do is we say offers from asking and somewhere in between that, just like an auction, you get that sweet spot where buyer and seller connect without that insult that the seller carries of, oh, but my home is so much worth it, more worth it to me. And you've got to take into so many factors what the market's doing, you know. Um, is it a depressed market? Is the market moving? You have to take these factors in and a reputable estate agent or property broker will, will help you achieve that. 
Yeah, there's also a question here on Zoom from Lauren Willis. I have two questions. Um, I've renovated my three bedroom home, 397 meter, uh, square meters, to include an extra bathroom, three bedrooms, two bathrooms and a, and a one bedroom. Open plan, separate entrance, which includes the bathroom. Question will, question, will this increase my asking price? and by how much? And am I correct to say that I shouldn't do too much more because I might lose out? And then when putting in an offer, how much should I offer, especially if I really like the property? She's also okay. done paving out in the front. Sorry, uh, it's also got? Paving out the front, just okay. to add, okay. add to it, yeah. Okay. So there's about five questions in one there. So I'm gonna go with the first. So. You certainly don't want to overcapitalize um, if, you, if you're wanting to sell, you want to do it smartly. Um, so well done for recognizing that. But you do, are, you are, so ensuite bathrooms are definitely a value add and will definitely raise the price. It's very hard for me to say what you should be asking because I don't know the area um, that she's in. I don't know the location. Um, I, I think I heard 397 meters squared, but I would have to see the condition of the house. Um, and But in terms of adding value, for sure, what you've done is great. Bathrooms are essential. You know, in the olden days, when I say the olden days, it wasn't olden days like <laughs> Kentucky Fry Colonel Sanders. But when I say the olden days, I talk about, you know, my parents' era where shared bathrooms were more of a thing. Today, bathrooms on suite add so much value, uh, and as well as the home offices. Um, so, so that's that's the you know the new kind of thinking. So, adding that space. Also, the places to really focus on renovating in your home: the kitchen and the bathrooms. Why? Because it depends on who your buyer is. But normally, if there's a woman in that picture or a, a partner with a feminine touch the bathrooms and the kitchen are the most sought after places and you'll see if you renovate those you'll see a, an entirely different appetite in your property those two spaces in your home have to be very enticing for your buyers found that uh, when we work with developers and they want to sell I mean, we've had one particular developer who they always get to the end and put the cheapest appliances in and he put these really cheap appliances in and he couldn't sell he had a, a little part of six townhouses couldn't sell them he came to me he said i don't know margaret i just cannot sell these townhouses i'm getting panicky now time is coming it was coming to christmas he needed to sell to go away and i said to him let's replace them with beautiful appliances and we just put beautiful new appliances in there and it changed the whole thing he sold all six that same weekend what we do as well is we say to him do one and say if you buy this weekend we'll give you these appliances free obviously they added into the price but the thought of the customer getting it and getting them free that weekend he signed up all six he did it did cost him six sets of appliances but it was so worth it in the long run i couldn't agree with you more margaret if i think about it you know the the best kind of appliance to put in a, a kitchen is that gas that gas stove which obviously you can get from Hersh's <laughs> because it, it ties in with the whole load a, a shedding aspect as well um and you don't have to worry about electricity going off so you, be smart with your appliances but again you don't have to when you when you're investing in your current property you don't have to put in the best tiles and the best doorknobs. You can be very savvy and just go to Builder's Warehouse or Chamberlain's um, and um, or Leroy Merlin. You see, I've done this a lot before, huh? <laughs> no, all the sorts. Um, just in terms of the handles as well as Hersh's, you go and you put all your appliances in there. Um, you know, you don't have to go to to such high market. You don't have to put in an entire smear kitchen. You know. Um, you look at look at your budget and see what's reasonable and and see what's affordable. Now I do remember this um, this participant asking about what should she offer if she's if she's moving in or if she wants to offer a price on a property. So there are cheeky offers out there which are thirty percent below, and you can always put that in. 
as a, as a starting point and be guided by the agent. And you'll know soon enough if it's rejected. I think that that's, that's important to, to put an offer in. I always go about 10% lower than the asking price. I think that's sort of fairly uh, uh, acceptable. And, and especially if you can do a cash deal, it's a cash deal, can I get take off 10%, go in at that price, and they'll usually say yes, or negotiate a little bit higher. And that just helps you to save a lot in the long run. But let's talk about getting the bond, you know, because you all want this, but now we've got to get a bond to pay for it. Do you go and apply for the bond first, or do you go and look for the property first? So we have Uber as our mortgage origination partner. And what's wonderful about them is as soon as we have a buyer on our books, we connect them with Uber to see what they can afford. Or even before that, there's the Uber affordability bond indicator. And, and then you can see what you can afford because there's nothing more heartbreaking going to see your dream property and then realizing you can't afford it. So do the homework first, see what you can afford for sure. And then go and view the property. And I would say give these mortgage originators, particularly Uber, I think they're outstanding, a chance because they go from bank to bank to bank to bank to find you the best rate. I mean, I've got a private banker and Uber beat um, my private banker. And, and you don't normally think that. Um, it's kind of the mindset of, let me go to my bank first um, but that's not always the case. So you can do the two at the same time. It depends on you, but know what you can afford for sure. And it's always healthy to put a deposit down um, because it shows your real sense of interest. I love the fact that you offer 10% below, Margaret. Um, you're not like many people. That's why I mentioned cheeky cheeky before um, because people tend to go in a lot lower. Um, but you are a very respectful buyer and <laughs> right, that does save a lot of the time negotiating, especially if you can do a cash deal. And you, you know, the banks are very favorable with their bonds as well at the moment, which is amazing. I mean, you never used to be able to get 100% bonds. However, there are more sureties in that in place because you can imagine if there's foreclosures, um, it's, it's a problem on their side. Now tell us about uh, transfer fees and how long it takes at the deeds office. I know the deeds office had several closures through COVID, through this, through that, to the next thing. So in the old days you'd go and you knew about 10 days later it would go and be registered and then it would all go. What's the delay at the moment? <laughs> it depends where, in what part of the country and at what time. Yeah. Right now, I mean, I could look at my WhatsApp group um, SCTV is a conveyancing firm, and they're also our partners, uh, Smith to Barter Buchanan Boys. And they send me daily alerts on which deeds office has closed. Pretoria in the last week has opened and closed, I think, three times. So you can imagine the frustration at getting that lodged, the backlog. Um, people have to have to reissue certificates because of COVID. So I'm not able to answer that question accurately, not knowing where or at what specific time, but um, right now it's very delayed. I think so. And I think it's going to continue until they actually catch up, you know. It's very backlogged, very backlogged. So, and you know, it's, it's also sad because during that initial lockdown, we had a lot of renters who were stuck um, and, and people stuck in their properties who couldn't move and people couldn't move in. So it created almost a homeless situation, which is very scary. Yeah, very scary. So um, when you go and can you negotiate that you'll take over on a certain date, provided your house is sold, is that, does that get a bit messy? So that's, we call that a subject to, so subject to the sale of a house for sure. And yeah. um, yes, you can do that. Um, and 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 it is done it, yeah. it does get a little bit tricky because you might have a buyer that loses their appetite if they yeah. wait too long too long and yeah, yeah. Deal comes by which it might possibly happen and yeah. then that, that buyer kind of loses hope on your property and is very dependent on you selling but then again if you get a get a realistic seller um, who prices it accurately according to the market and the position and where it's in, then there shouldn't be a problem with that property moving. 
Okay, now the last thing I want to just talk about is a suspensive sale. You know, in the old days, the suspensive sale was really good. You'd go, you'd negotiate with the price, you'd pay the person until you sort of got to your deposit, because you don't have the deposit. You pay them until you've, you've paid off your deposit and then you get a bond for the rest. Is that still happening today? Not not too much from what from what I, I know of, Margaret. I, I don't hear about it as much. Um, I don't think it's as as popular as it was back back in the day. But it 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 is a nice favorable thing for the person. You yes. know, it does it does make sense. If you really want to buy a house and you haven't got a deposit, just suggest a suspense of sale, especially if it's an older person selling to a younger person. They don't need all that money right now. They want to be sure they're going to get it. They and they're clear because if you renege on any of your payments, the house goes back to them. But by the same token, they do get some money in the meantime. So yeah, I'll just I, so yeah, I, I just I it because it's it's a lovely way also of doing business and especially if you say old to young, you know. And where, where the seller can wait and and has the means, sure, that's that's wonderful, but a lot of people aren't in that position. Yeah. Um, you, Margaret, can I just quickly come in? Yes. Um, yeah, this is going slightly off the subject, but it's such an interesting one, and maybe it's, it's a discussion for another day. There's a thing here from um, Priska. She says, exciting times ahead um, for the real estate market with... Um, on how to lead generate with the new Poppy Act coming in. What's that all about? <laughs> okay, so Poppy, it's the protection of personal information. Yeah, you, we've all heard about it. Okay. Um, it is quite severe. So you can't actively pursue any customer without them having given you consent. So you know, for any industry, one has to get quite creative. And I love this, to be honest, because the last thing we want to do is harass our future clients or our customers. I know personally, when I get messages that are unsolicited, I get angry. It's, it's not, it's, it's, I'm certainly not going to be endeared to your brand if you hounding me. So yeah. it's about filtering your database, making sure that your clients or people that have um, inquired about a property before or have been on your newsletters are still willing participants in engaging with you in conversation. And if they aren't, it's incumbent on us, on all the brands in whatever sector, to, to remove them from our database. Otherwise, there are heavy penalties and fines. So it is a very interesting time. Interesting times and never a better time to buy than now. The interest rate is still incredibly low. Are we hoping it's going to stay low for a long, long time to come? If you are renting, you are throwing your money away. You're making other people rich. If you are renting, decide today that it's time to buy a house. Start small. You know, I started with a house that I wouldn't even live in. Um, I bought it. I put a tenant in. He was happy to live there. He paid off my bond up. And that's how I started my property portfolio, which today is over a billion rand. So you've got to start somewhere. And no time like today. So if you want to start, just start deciding where you're going to start, start small and build up. You can start small, renovate, build up. If it's under a million rand, you don't pay capital gains tax. It's so good. It's amazing. You can make a lot of money on it. I've made more property, more money in property than I've made ever selling toasters and kettles. This is how I do it. I want you to be able to do it. I don't tell you to impress it. I tell you to impress upon you that if I can do it, you can do it. You can make money out of property. You do know what you have to do. You've got to start small so you make those mistakes with small amounts of money but you can build up to a lot of money very very quickly so yeah thank you so much for being on the show with me today i really have loved having you here you're so informative and you know your business so incredibly well so thank you for being here thank you to all of you who watched on zoom and on facebook and i'm hoping that today is the day you'll go out and start your property portfolio you've got to start somewhere and it can only grow up there and that's a promise thank you very much thank you yale very much thank you glenda for being on the show and to everybody who tuned in thank you